among his many titles, assistant <laughs> head coach Mike Reed. Y'all please fire away questions whenever you're ready. I have to think that kind of in those last days of preparing for Georgia and kind of got some injuries back there, did you ever go to bed one night? Man, I don't know who we're going to put out there against Georgia, but it's been a great product so far. I mean, you'd have to think that everybody's kind of battled through and played really well. Yeah, they've had a good a good fall camp, um, and that's the blessing to have a, a, a bunch of healthy guys right now. Uh, usually, it's not that that way around here with our defensive backs. Um, so I've been very pleased. Guys have come back, worked hard, and uh, it's a testament of you know our strength staff and uh, guys buying in. I think uh, Ashton Hampton ended up getting a few snaps against Georgia. Like, how, how did he develop throughout August to be prepared for that Georgia game for those opportunities if needed? Practice. Um, we've got, uh, you, I mean, heck, you saw what our offense did this weekend. And going up against that every day in practice, you know, gets these kids prepared. And uh, it was kind of funny because, you know, Ashton didn't play corner in, in high school. He was a safety. So for him to make that transition, you know, was, uh, you know, was eye-opening for me. Difficult for him uh, when he was taxed uh, to switch positions? Uh, I mean, he comes from a football family. His dad is the head football coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. His brother played DB for Northwestern and Tulane. So it's in his DNA. You know, he's a he's a football player. You know, so him making that transition, you know, it wasn't big. You know, uh, it was one of those kind of things that it's a challenge to him. With uh, Avion Terrell have four pass breakups, I think one shy of tying a school record. Uh, how has he been just his, consist his consistency, his performance through these first two games from your perspective? Um, he, he goes about it in a professional ma attitude. You know, he comes to work every day. He works hard. He has a chip on his shoulder. He's always got something to prove. So for, for, for me, you know, it's been, it's been evident, you know, when he was nine years old coming on campus, coming to uh, Davos Winnie football camp. You know, he was always out to prove himself. So it's nothing of a shock, you know. Uh, it's good that he's getting an opportunity to do it and showcase to everyone, you know, that uh, he's more than just being AJ's little brother. And uh, speaking of AJ, I, we spoke to him before the Georgia game. He, um, he said Avion has been better him at any stage of football as, as AJ. I guess from your perspective, coaching both, do you agree with that assessment? And what are the I guess, similarities <laughs> and differences between the two? Well, it's definitely a different, uh, uh, different in the aspect that, you know, A.J. was, was quiet. You know, whereas Avion, he's going to let you know he's in the room, um, which is he's great. Both of them are great kids. You know, love to work with both of them. Um, um, I guess he's – I would say, you know, Avion's had more success up until this point than, than his brother has. And uh, it's just, you know, the, uh, the tale of tales, you know, different season – different reasons, things like that, so. With, with Ashton, who told you the story first about him showing up at the airport? Was it in Tampa? Yes. Um, who told you that story and kind of how did they, if you can relay it, that would be great. Well, it's, it's, it actually goes back further than that. Um, me and uh, Ashton dad were roommates and teammates in the NFL. And uh, we played in the NFL Europe together. So I've known about Ashton since he was a baby. Um, it was just ironic that, you know, uh, his dad was coaching at uh, uh, USF, and um, and his his, uh, his pop Warner team was uh, one of the teams selected to be on the tarmac for the uh, national championship game, and uh, Alabama arrived first, and uh, Nick Saban at the time didn't allow any of his players or his staff members to interact with these pop Warner kids, and uh, you know how we do things here. You know we're all about community and um, making sure that we, we do things in a way that exemplifies Clemson. And uh, he took a picture with me, my, my daughter, and, uh, and so it was been something I've always kept. You know, it was, uh, it was crazy because, you know, you fast forward, you didn't know he was going to be who he is now. I mean, I still had the phone, a picture on my phone, and at that time, Ashton probably was about four or five, and now he's six, two and a half, you know, so who would ever know? Can you share that picture with Ross? Do you mind? I will. <laughs> I will. I definitely will. Uh, just Thank make you. sure you remember, uh, remind me of that. <laughs> I think during the, uh, the summer you mentioned that you wanted to see Jaden Lucas. He has uh, seen him play since it's been a while since he was able to play on the football field. Through fall camp, through the first two games, what have you seen from him and his uh, 
performance. Have you seen flashes? I mean, you've seen the reason why I recruited young, why we recruited him out of high school. I mean, the kid's dynamic. He has size, speed. You know, he's athletic, and it was good for him to get out there. You know, uh, against Georgia, and have some success. You know, for a kid who's been injured uh, off and on the past couple of years. You know, now he's he's getting an opportunity to go out there and show everybody. You know why? You know why we recruited him and why he's such a player. A good player and why he's special to our program. I think he, uh, he mentioned that he feels kind of out on a shoulder shoulder injury entering the entering that game, but he made one of the first open field tackles and he said he didn't feel. It, I guess how was that? How big was that for him to see him just go out there and see that the shoulder is fine? Good because a lot of times when when kids have that in the back of their mind, they're a little apprehensive and gun shy, and to see him to go out there and just just play free was 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 great, you know. And so it's one of those kind of things, you come back from injury, you don't know, and you have that first test, and you go through that first test, and you're, you're unscathed, and you're good. Now you're, your confidence through the roof. Any questions for Coach Virtually? Anybody else in the room? This this season, as it started to develop, just from your perspective, um, the response from this team uh, and their mentality uh, that just kind of gives you confidence moving in as you now have a couple of weeks of games under your belt. Well, you know, it's it's something that's been very evident through camp and through last spring is the leadership of these young men. Um, we have some great leaders. We have a team that actually loves each other, loves to be around each other. And when you have that 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 uh, in the equation, you know, you have you know, success. And uh, it's, it's good to see it, you know. Um, as I always say, uh, football, if, if, if football was like life, we'd be in a better place, especially with a team like this, um, where you see love, guys caring for each other, hugging each other, hanging out with each other, not just in the facility, but you know, outside uh, the, the, the Reeves Center. Really obvious. It's a great opportunity to get lots of guys in there and to get film on all these different guys. But really, from a coaching perspective, how valuable was this weekend and just the sheer number of guys that got to see themselves on film today when you got or this week when you guys went through that film? Well, twofold, it, it does something for those young men because, you know, everybody comes out here and they, they, they want to play and they practice hard. And it's like, you know, they deserve to play. So let's play them. And on the other side, as a coach, you know, guys are one play away from playing. So you have a guy that goes down for injury. You don't want the guy that's replacing him to never have played before. So when you give him that valuable time in a game, now he gets to build his confidence up so that when it comes his time to, to go out and perform, he's performing at a high level. Because, you know, you don't want guys, you know, you, as we say, we want guys to play to the standard. And the standard is your best. Is this the deepest room you've had? <sighs> it's crazy that you ask that because, I mean, it's, it's uh, I say that because when I used to coach all 20 of them, that was deep, <laughs> you know? So now when I'm coaching, I guess, nine of them, um, I would say yes. And, it, it, you know, from that aspect, from just a sheer cornerback standpoint, I would say yes. Guys that I can put in the game and feel comfortable about, uh, feel comfortable going and doing the job. How confident, confident were you in, uh, with, how comfortable would you, were you with Shelton Lewis uh, getting his first kind of game reps against App State this past week? Well, you know, if you, I mean, for people that know this, Shelton actually got his first game reps this week as a nickel. So it just shows his versatility uh, of what he can do. And I love it because now this kid can play all over in, in the secondary and, and have success. And when you have guys that are interchangeable like that, now now it's it's like, okay, plug and play, you know. Um, so if he, somebody goes down another spot, hey, we can plug this kid there because he knows this position. So when you have that right at your capability, you know, you're, you're going to have a great team. He learned uh, nickel in, in, uh, in preseason? Yes. And how, I guess how – how did he kind of get acclimated to that position, switching from corner to the Well, it's one of those kind of things, you know, a, a lot of guys have aspirations on playing in the NFL. And it's my, you know, my thing is the more you can do, the more valuable you are to a team, the more value you bring to a team. You know, so, you know, you, you know I'm talking about, we're just talking NFL right now. You have a kid that can play only corner, but then you have another kid that can play nickel and corner. Which one are you going to take? You want to take the kid that brings more value because in the NFL you only have what a 53-man roster, so it adds value 
you know. And so, it, you know, for him, you know, it puts him in a situation where, you know, we can plug and play him and, you know, and uh, he can have success. And um, Coach Sweeney uh, added some support coaches to the staff uh, this offseason. I guess your role as special teams coordinator, how did that kind of change with guys like Coach Allen coming in and coaching the punters, I guess, for you? I mean, it's great. I mean, heck, I don't know how to kick a punt. No, I don't know how to kick a ball. This kid, this guy has done it, and has done it on every level and had success. You know, I mean, he probably will have more credibility coaching uh, punters than I would. They probably look at me like I got a unicorn on my a horn on my head. You know, but this guy brings that 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 credibility with him, and it's great to have him in the room. All right, because now those guys can have a, a specialty coach to go to that can tell them all the intricacies of punting the ball or kicking the ball. How much has Will Gilchrist added value and kind of taken some of that pressure off of what you? I mean, I mean, his, I mean, you know, a lot, you know, because now he was on the staff last year, but there was only a certain amount of things that he could do. Now he's actually out there; he can help us coach. So it's, it gives us another set of eyes, you know. So now our kids are, are you know, constantly getting coached. You know, as as we say now, you know, the 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 player to coach ratio is one to one. You know, so there's somebody that's coaching that kid every play, every snap. Whereas, you know, you know, one play, you know, uh, in the previous years, you know, you may miss a guy because you're looking at somebody else too. Well, now everyone has a specific coach coaching them on every play. So it allows them to get, you know, one, to get direct feedback right now. You're fortunate that you, you coach both AJ and now Avion. People are always saying, how similar are they? How are they different? Somebody asked me that the other day on the radio. I said, look, they both just have a nose for the football. Exactly. Be around it. But, but what, you know, how do you kind of compare and contrast the two of them? I mean, I mean just from a, from a physical stature, one's 6'1", one, one's, I'm going to give him 5'11". You know, I'm be nice, you know. Um, and, uh, they're, they, you know, they both have great ball skills. They're both quick, you know. Um, it's, you know, I, I would say, like I said, you know, Avion is more like the pit bull, okay? He, he's the one that, that, you know, he's in your face. He's, you know, he's very, you know, you know tenacity. Um, AJ was one of those guys that, he, you know, he's not going to have to say, he's not going to say nothing. He's just going to go up there and he's going to do it. You know, he's going to go home at the end of the day and you're going to be like, whoa, this kid shut down their best receiver. Whereas Avion, you know, you're going to hear it. You know he's gonna he's gonna let you, he's gonna let you know that he shut him down, you know. And like I said, uh, it's been it's been great to coach both of them. You know I love the fact that I I've been able to coach a a, a brother's a brother's uh, tandem like that. You know not pe many people in uh, in college football get that opportunity. So I've been blessed. Avion says he has more swag. <laughs> that's Avion. <laughs> you know that's Avion. Uh, you know that's. That's that's uh, that's what you get when you you know you're a little brother. You know, it's always going to be that 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 little inner confrontational thing between each other. But I love it. You know, um, being a part of that family for a long period of time. I think Avion mentioned that his nephew uh, is going to be the next great uh, Terrell. Um, I hope so. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just hoping that I'm I'm alive then. I want to see it. <laughs> uh, I will say this: he's tough. He's tough. He ain't got no fear. <laughs> Anybody else for Coach Reed? All right, Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.